Are you searching? Are you looking for something new, something different? Are you being called to your ancestral roots? The Modern Sages podcast is a tribe of women that believe in exploring beyond the broken constructs of society. We believe in empowering women to embrace the medicine within. All with an open mind, baby. You know, since we are talking about air, I have been lighting my sage, kind of just adding in that element um, of air into our space. So we're just going to take a moment. And if you haven't looked into breath work, you know, I am not a breath work facilitator, so I don't have all the knowledge about breath work, but I know it's powerful <laughs> and it's so helpful. But if you think about that too, is if we're connecting back into the four elements, um, being connected to our body, air is our breath. And there are a lot of people who will experience a lot of healing or you hear about people talking about partaking in plant medicine and how it's like they do a lot of healing outside of their body through partaking of like ayahuasca or, you know, certain kinds of psilocybin or whatever that looks like. But we can also get to that area of healing and of understanding through breath work. And that's just taking, you know, different patterns in breath. And if you really want to dive into that space, breath work can be such a great way of clearing out the blood, clearing out your veins, clearing out your heart center. But it also can help you leave your body and to do a lot of interdimensional healing and traveling and exploring all a part of our breath. And so I think it's so cool that that can be a natural stimulant to bring us into this space of deeper integration of deeper soul healing of understanding I just think it's such a powerful tool that we've been given and today I feel like is going to be a little bit different um, because we also are very much so learning about air which air is connected to the east and this is also connected to um, our mind so a lot of times everything stems from our mind, <laughs> whether it be good or bad or however we experience that, a lot does stem from the power of our mind. And we know that as we connect into our ancestors, we can have things that are passed down generationally. Um, and that can also be mindsets or limitations or limiting beliefs. And so really when we're gonna be diving in and exploring about air, and our ancestors, so we're going to be diving deeper into understanding about the mental aspect, about our thoughts, about how we are experiencing things, and if something is brought down generationally, or if we're experiencing something in ourself that is holding us back. And so I, I also know that when we're diving into spirituality and, and spiritual gifts and delivering messages, we also have um, this aspect of bridging our physical and our spiritual self. And so a lot of people will use different kinds of divination, whether that be oracle cards, tarot, runes, people will read tea leaves, um, or those who might not be into that area. You know, scripture has been a really big external tool to help us access something internal. And so if you look at all different kinds of religion, cultural beliefs, anything like that, a lot of people will lean upon specific kinds of tools to help guide them or to help access the space of delivering messages or of receiving messages. And so today, I actually don't do much with tarot, <laughs> um, but today I felt like since we are really diving deep into the mind and we are helping bridge the physical, the mental mind and our spiritual self. I really felt like it was appropriate to pull some tarot cards and to deliver some messages regarding the mind about that. And it's funny because there are three of you on right now, but I also pulled three different cards <laughs> that I just felt like we really wanted to hone in on and to allow that to be the messages that come in today 
regarding our ancestors and regarding the power of our mind. And as I'm connecting into that space, our ancestors want to help empower us to have a positive perspective because we are only here for the short time. And yet we have fallen to, into the lineage and into the mindsets and into the understanding that has been passed down from generation to generation. And of course we know that, but it's a good reminder. It's kind of like, once again, if we're going to use these glasses, right? My grandmother had these red glasses and she loved them and her grandma and her mother gave her them when she was little. So then when she has my mom, she's going to give her red glasses because she loved her glasses so much. And then when I'm growing up, my mom's like, Hey, it's time to get you red glasses because I loved mine. Grandma loved hers. Great grandma loved hers. And that's kind of how things are brought down in our mental mind as well. We may have limitations. We may have limiting beliefs that are showing up in our space that may be ours, but they also may be something that's passed down generationally, <laughs> something that keeps holding us in this space. And so I really just feel like bridging the aspect of using something physical at times to break through our mental blocks or to break through that space. And I'm not saying you have to use tarot or anything like that. I'm just saying that some people do use those, whether it be any kind of divination. Um, but in the tarot deck, the sword, the sword is aspect of the mind. And so I just pulled three of the swords to really hone in and to think about these specific things and how this may show up for us um, that are showing up in our ancestral lineage as well for those who are here. And it's quite interesting because I feel almost like, um, <laughs> I feel like these three cards are definitely specific messages for you guys. Um, and I don't know, Jazz, if this makes sense with you in this area, but I'm just kind of like looking down and I feel like one, two, three for each of us here. Um, but this is the first one that's coming in. And Jazz, you'll have to let me know if this resonates or makes sense with you. Um, so this is called, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is the nine of swords. And you can see there's the nine swords and then the person in the, the bed. And when I think about this, I feel as though, you know, maybe in your aspect, and of course this can be for everyone, but for some reason, Jazz, I'm like leaning into the space today for you is I feel as though it can be, there can be a lot of dreams, a lot of things that you want to come about. And this may also be that in your ancestral lineage, maybe on your dad's side, um, that there are a lot of people who are very open to dreams. They're very connected into seeing things or having dreams or having this sense of like imagination or having a deeper divine sense of a knowing. And in the past, that could have been someone who maybe was like a seer or a visionary, someone who was able to see things before they happened in that aspect. And it also feels like maybe there's this remembrance showing up inside of you. It's also like, oh, okay, I'm reminding myself that there's more than this, or maybe gifts are showing up for you. Or maybe you're also having more dreams or you're seeing things a lot more or you're having more color show up in your space. But I also feel like there's such a beautiful gift because I feel like that does pass down the generations, but it can also be such a beautiful gift of trusting. However, the flip side of that is the space of um, being worried or scared or having this fear. And so when I see them up at night, it, it to me it feels like in those times where we could be relaxed where we could be enjoying or like really like sliding or stepping into that like when we go to bed it almost feels like there could be this worry or extra worry or extra doubt extra fear coming in of like oh am I going to be safe or is this gift mine am I going crazy am I worrying too much like it just feels like where this is such a space of ease in the generations that's like bubbling up to the surface to be looked at. It also feels like there's this sense of worry, like, am I bad? Am I wrong? Can I do this? Doing a lot of second guessing. And maybe that shows up having a hard time going to bed or being a hard time sleeping at night or waking up after having specific dreams or imaginations or different things coming in. 
but it just feels like when I'm connecting in being aware that having the gift to see doesn't have to be a bad thing. And in fact, it can be such a beautiful aspect of reclaiming and reconnecting to your ancestral heritage is something that's so big. It's like so much bigger than what you can understand or so much bigger than what you can experience. And so I just really feel as though being aware of that sight to see, even though it might feel dark at times, or even though it might feel like, oh, I'm disconnected from my gifts. I'm disconnected from who I am or why I'm here, what the purpose is, or maybe you're navigating really great grief. It's just this constant reminder that the sight to see is so powerful and it's so there. It's just trusting. And when you can find that space to trust your own mind, and a lot of times we get this confused, like, oh, am I seeing things? Is that really me or am I making it up? But when we can trust that those things that are showing up or for coming for a reason, it gives us a better space of understanding so that we can trust ourselves. And that's where the ease comes. That's where we can sleep better at night where we don't have to be worried or our mind keeping us up or our fear is keeping us up because we're surrendering into that space and knowing that you're always going to be comforted. You're always going to have that extra strength and that security to keep you warm, meaning you're not going to get lost in that space. It'll keep you warm. It'll keep you there. It's just the matter of, of surrendering and trusting into that space. And it's, it's, really very much so a sense of belief in your mind, (laughs) belief in yourself. And so it'll be interesting to see if any of that, you know, shows up for you later today in this call. But I just felt like, you know, number one is definitely in the space of trusting and honoring and understanding. Um, And the next thing that's coming up is the next card that I really want to hit home on all about the mind and the sword and understanding. Hello, Cynthia, welcome, welcome, is the power of trusting. And I'm being drawn into the space of butterflies, into the space of magic is in our mindset and connecting to the air. At times we can feel that we can be stuck in a box. And for whoever resonates with this number two, I want you to just sit with that and to think about that is, It can be easy to almost be too cautious or too limiting on how things show up or how it has to be all of these specific ways or it has to show up in one way or another. It can pull away the magic of being able to co-create in your mind. And I feel as though connecting into the ancestors, connecting into the queen of swords is, um, Cynthia, we're just kind of doing a little bit of, um, a little channeling before. And in the past ones, I haven't really done channeling like this, but this time I'm using cards just because we are physical and mental. And so we're kind of bridging the gap between the physical and the mental as we dive into the air, which is our mind, (laughs) which is the sword. And, and we can cut our, our thoughts can cut us really deep. It can be such a space, but it can also be a space of great strength. And so as I'm connecting into the Queen of Swords, it's just this reminder that our ancestors have to bring us that we need to check ourselves, check to see if we're actively inviting miracles in. But I also see her having the, a butterfly crown. And so remembering the space of of honoring magic, of honoring the aspect that things can happen for good for a reason. And of course, we always on the butterfly. And this is funny that you hopped on Cynthia and I right when we're talking about the butterfly, because I know you have the butterfly in your thing a lot, but it just really is embracing that aspect that our mind is a constant space of growth, of change, of understanding. And it just feels as though the ancestral heritage that's connecting in here wants to help bring magic or bring this vitality and this velocity and this sparkle to the world because it can be so easy to feel as though, oh, I got to go throughout another day. Here we go again. When in truth, this mindset that we have, our mind can be such a powerful gift, but it's a reminder to look for magic. And we're going to go on the journey and we'll have you guys think of kind of a specific thing that you want to maybe see a higher perspective or see a bird's eye view of 
but this is a space, a space of reminding you that your mind and air has so much magic. And on top of that, a lot of times when we talk about our ancestors, we think about us having to do a lot of the healing and us having to move into the space of healing and honoring. And it can feel kind of heavy at times and overwhelming. But when we do give ourselves the space to connect to our ancestors, yes, we will be doing some healing. But healing also can be fun. It can be a space of enjoying those connect those connections and knowing that we have gifts that are passed down generationally. We have spiritual gifts. We have viewpoints. We have <clears throat> different beliefs that can be passed down. And so I think this is just an invitation to really welcome, welcome in those magical gifts that can be passed down from generation to generation if we but look for them and if we but claim them ourselves is we have to do some of those reclaiming aspects to really allow that to be part of our journey and part of our space and our existence. And the last one that I wanted to hit on is the seven of swords. And he is holding five swords and he's leaving behind two, but it's almost like as he walks away, he's still, he's still focused on those back two. And I think this is the last message too that we really want to hit home on as far as connecting into our mind and air is we can have so many good things going on. We can have these five new things that we're experiencing and we can still be stuck in the past or stuck in those things that maybe we were forced to let go or things that were taken from us that we just couldn't hold on to any longer. And it can be easy for us instead of looking towards the future, honoring what we do have we can be stuck in the past or stuck thinking about a past friendship or relationship or career or experience that is really holding us back. And I think it's so important that we remember that, yes, just as much as those swords might be there to hold us back or it's part of our journey to, to honor that and to feel that and to look and see why does that keep showing up for me? Because if we can't, if we're having a hard time letting it go or letting a friendship go or a relationship or a career, whatever that may be, it's kind of like a, like, um, a, like a, a sword on the side where it's like everywhere I go, I still feel this. Well, maybe there's some kind of closure or maybe there's some kind of soul lesson that still is working its way out. And so instead of pushing it back and being like, why do I keep feeling this? Or why does this keep showing up? It's, this is an invitation to, when we go on a journey, maybe to have that as your experience and to fly the eagle's wings, to see a different perspective or to see why this certain circumstance keeps coming up because there's a reason why, but it doesn't have to be a space of healing. It can just say, hey, this is a message or this is something to be aware of. And it doesn't have to be a scary or harsh thing, but really navigating and embracing the lessons that come with it. And that's part of our mental aspect as well is there are soul contracts. And I don't know why this is coming back up in relationships, but there are soul contracts that we have with different people. And that doesn't mean that they're always going to be in our space. And there's going to always be cycles of soul contracts. And this is what the ancestors are really bringing into the space is that we come here and we have this experience that we have to hold everything back. We have to hold it all here and we have to own it. We have to have everything in our physical possession. And that can also be with friendships or relationships. And even when someone's let go or even when someone's long gone, it can feel like we're still holding on. We're still like grasping onto that experience. And that may have been um, a past experience. If those who believe in past lives, it could be like a past life connection, or it could just be this sense of there are soul contracts and soul lessons to learn with this person. And so looking at that and not having that be a bad or a wrong or, man, how come I can't move forward? What's wrong with me? Is maybe there's a deeper lesson that still is calling you to look at it. And to see, okay, what did I learn? What, how did that make me feel? And how can I move forward from there? And not how can I forget, but what can I learn from this experience? And how can I apply that into my life now? 
And so if you have a pen or a paper, you know, this is a great time to, before we jump into our journey, to just sit with that, just to sit with the aspect of, I want you just to sit with this and think of a certain circumstance or a certain situation or a mindset that could be holding you back. And I want you to take some time to just think about this certain circum- certain circumstance and then focusing on what you've made that mean or the limiting beliefs that come with it. So just take a moment once again to write down a certain search, certain situation and the thoughts that you have associated with that. Am I bad? Am I wrong? Am I, can I not do this? Why can't I do this? Are there any limitations that are coming forward in your space? And just give yourself a space to sit with that and think about it. Or why do I keep going back to that relationship or that friendship? Or why am I so hung up on that? Just writing any thoughts that come to your mind. And then as you're looking at that, and what we can dive in more after our journey if we feel like it, but what lessons, what are my soul less, like what is my soul learning from this lesson? What is the soul lesson here? And from that perspective, how can I apply that to my life today? There is nothing bad or wrong about these thoughts. Our thoughts are so divinely guided. Our thoughts can give us a perspective to move forward. And if something isn't right or we came here to learn something that we're missing, our thoughts and our mind are going to be the first things to let us know. (laughs) And I feel like I'm going to draw one more card as far as it goes with connecting into the mind. Um, But before I do that, does anyone have any questions or thoughts? or any of those cards that really stuck out to them. Okay, Um, the last one is 10 of swords and it was upside down, Um, which this one is him on the ground and all of these swords are stuck in his back. Um, impaling him or making that limiting for him to be able to move. And I think that with it being upside down, it's also this space of just reminding us that we may have certain things that we want to create or things that if we were given one week to live or one year to live, what would we want our masterpiece to be? What would we want that thing that we left behind? What would that be? Would that be a story? Would that be just, you know, time spent with family? Would it be feeling more connected? If you think about that, if you had one year left to live, what would you put all of your time and energy into creating? Because we can have a lot of limiting thoughts or we can keep ourselves busy or we can have, well, what about this? Shoulda, woulda, coulda, all those things. And ultimately, a lot of ancestors and a lot of people who have passed are met with this experience of, did I create what I wanted? And regardless of if it's yes or if it's no or if it's halfway there is still a space of growth on the other side, still lessons to be learned, 
but if we had one year left to live, what would we create? And from there, you may begin to think of all of these limiting beliefs or limiting thoughts or your mind slowing down to say, oh, I have this and this and that and this that are holding us back. And this is what I'm excited for our journey to really dive into is calling upon our ancestors. We're going to be riding the wings of a bird and that bird will show up for you, whatever bird that it may be. And we can look into different meanings of the birds after, but I want you to just think about what it is that you want to create in life. Or if you had one year left, what would that be? And maybe there's a limiting space or a certain circumstance that's, that's hitting home or holding you back. Maybe that's what you want to focus on today as we journey. Regardless of what it is, our mind is so powerful. And our ancestors want to help us to relieve any of the burden that has been carried down from generation to generation. But we also remember that it's in a space that it can be fun. And healing can be exciting and light and playful, along with heavy because there is duality, good and bad, happy, sad all of those things, that's part of this human journey. But we always seem to get so stuck in the things that are passed on that are negative that we forget the positive things that also come from our ancestors. So I'm just kind of going to sit here and see if there's anything else. I almost just feel like this is a great time, an invitation before closing up the day, even just for each of us to Put on a cup, put on a mute, like put on a song, even for the next four minutes and to just write down what you experienced, the lesson you learned, the birds that came to you. And also just to maybe open up the space for automatic writing for the next step is as you both are moving forward in this area of embracing, even just having the right step and moving forward, the right next little tiny thing or the mindset, or some understanding, I just feel like this is a great time to just reflect, and to just be with this energy, to be with that crown, that chakra that opened up, and when you feel like you want to bring an inspiration to just imagine that crown being placed on your head, and feeling the pulsing of that energy, and and maybe if you're getting stuck, or if you feel like there's a lack of support, is jumping on that bird again, and just flying with your ancestors to see a different perspective or another way of moving forward. Um, so the first thing that I wanted to do is to connect in and to connect into our ancestors. So when I'm talking about connecting to our ancestors and delivering this message, is we have different layers of ancestors. So we have those that we know who have passed. And a lot of times we hold a lot of memory. We hold a lot of um, connection to them, or we also can have a lot of limitations or limiting beliefs that are there as well. So that can look across as if, you know, maybe if we had an uh, like a grandparent who showed up a specific way, we might be less open to them being able to change or to grow or to move. And so we're really in that space of just honoring and diving into those who are beyond that. And so this may be someone that you do know who does come forward today and is there with you in this meditation in this guided space. But when I'm connecting in to deliver this message from the ancestors, it's those who are back further. It's those who are maybe six, maybe like five, six, seven generations back who want to bring in a specific way of healing, of understanding. So it's like this collective space of healing um, that I wanted to bring forward and feel really prompted to do. And in the same space, they are who we are. You know, we are makeup. Our makeup is from them. Like who we are is so connected into their space. And it truly is so powerful when we can really acknowledge that those who came before us have a significant impact on who we are. And maybe today you'll also be able to feel that, but they also had different methods and different forms of healing. And, you know, the, the, the element of fire is really connected to passion. 
it's connected to purpose. It's the refiner's fire. It's there to like help sanctify and purify and to help us move forward. And when we call upon the direction of fire, we also call upon that space of interperspection so that we can have this velocity or this passion, this space of moving forward. And so that's really what we're going to explore tonight. And so we're going to call upon our ancestors about five or eight generations back. And of course, when we do the journey, it might be people closer to you who have experienced and used the element of fire in their practice to help them physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. So it'll be kind of interesting to see, <laughs> you know, whatever they bring forth in the space of fire. I just need to hurry and plug in my computer. So if you haven't already and you can, make sure you light your candle. I have a, a few different ones going right now just to infuse our space um, with fire. So I'm going to take a moment. I just have a pen and a paper and I'm just going to write down. Um, just take a moment to open up that channel. And if you want to close your eyes, take a couple of deep breaths in, just opening yourself up to receiving whatever messages to come forward as well. So the first thing that I'm seeing, and we'll, we'll do this journey as well, but I'm being like drawn into this opening where there's a huge fire around us. And it's almost like I'm seeing and experiencing past generations and how the fire was kind of their sanctuary. In the olden days, the fire was in the hearth of the home. The fire was what everything was centered around in the kitchen. It was the space where after a long day, everyone would come together and the food was cooked or the water was boiled for whatever teas they were going to drink. And maybe they're going to get ready to take baths and it was like warming up that fire. So it just shows that they're talking about how their life was really centered around bringing in the space of fire and how fire was there to help heal and to sanctify and to bless and to honor um, our spiritual journey. And it was something that they said they would come back to often as a way of connection. And it's so beautiful because then I'm like seeing in the different scope of, I'm like seeing how they would use fire to also bring in healing of the soul. And so if you could imagine or see with me in the space that they're I just see them showing me how they would have sacred ceremony, including the fire and the space. And so I see them showing up to me and I'm witnessing them hosting like this, this woman, I see her like losing her baby and I see her like going through this deep grief and this deep heaviness. And I see a bunch of women around her adding and like singing for her as they're surrounded by this fire. And it's almost like I see her surrendering into the fire and like falling to the ground and like opening up her heart and her chest to the warmth of the fire and how that fire was there to like help her find beauty and peace and sanctify that space within her of bringing in like a reassurance of like surrender and trust and honor and how that was such a beautiful space of healing. And I see them holding a lot of different gatherings, whether it be in the tribe, whether it be even just in their home with the family around them or those that they cared about, was the fire brought an aliveness. And they say that it brings such a sense of connection, a sense of beauty, a sense of honor. And not only that, it's also a place where memories are held. And a lot of times if we think about going to the mountains or having a fire in the backyard, a lot of times when we stare into the flame, it's, it kind of puts us in a trance and we're able to have deep conversation. We're able to talk about the philosophy of life and all of the different amazing aspects that like go kind of deep and inner perspective, or it helps us to become more calm, to be more reflective upon what it is that we're doing in life. And if we're accompanied in a great space or where we're at there. And so it almost just feels like them really wanting to bring in the space that fire can bring in healing. It can bring in purpose. It can help put us in a trance. And I also see it's a great space of where memory is held. And if you think back to our great ancestors who came here and they spent every night around a fire 
and they would share traditions. They would share like different kinds of stories. They would share ancestral connections, you know, stories of their great grandmother who maybe was a healer or who was really great at planting something or making something, or maybe there was this male who was really good at capturing deer and, and those legacies were left on as the stories were told in the fire. And I just see everyone staring into the fire and stories being told and the dancing of the flame of like being able to see those memories and those people and that connection. And so really when we light a fire, when we call upon our space, or maybe when someone feels lost since they light a candle to find their way home, it really is a great space of connecting to, at a deeper level into who it is that we are, into honoring that element of passion, of rebirth, of letting go, of being able to sit in a trance and to stare at the flames and to see what messages or thoughts come in. And I just see it being that, you know, fire can be something that we look so, it feels so scary is if we were to look at like a mountain on fire, it would be like, oh, like that's powerful and I want nothing to do with it. It's so terrifying. There's so much fear around the aspect of fire, but I also see our ancestors held great wisdom and great honor and great respect for fire because just as much as that fire can take away and can burn it also creates a space for new growth to happen. And so, of course, we know that fire is, is everything. It, it brings things into form. It can burn just as fast, but it's also creating space for regrowth and rebirth and to release and to let go. And so I just see them really wanting to hone in and say like that even though fire and even though letting go can be scary, it's also such a powerful space that we can call upon to add that into our life. And that's also in the space of creation is they're saying that if we want to create, if we want to have that connection or, or to draw that attention back into our space of like, I want to move forward. I'm ready for something new and I want to have my ancestors support. or I want to honor them like lighting a candle and bridging that gap in between can be such a healing and such a powerful thing. If we allow ourselves to really sit with that and be in that space and honor that communication. And they want us to, they want us to be here. They want to support us in all of those ways, but it just feels like there's such depth to connecting to fire and to allowing that to sanctify us. And as well as our connection to our ancestors is there also is a lot of limitation and a lot of fear and disbelief when it comes to how we can connect to our ancestors or why we do that, or if they're even here. And I just see them saying that as we connect in, it really ultimately is connecting back into the roots of who we are but it's activating this fire inside of our bones, inside of our veins. That is where we came from. It's, it's the blood life. It's the flow of who we are, of what we experience of that drive. It's that energy of life is if you think about our bodies, right? We have water, which is blood. We have air, which is our breath. We have fire, air, blood, water. I'm getting confused now. Blood is the water, air is the breath, our fire is like, it's our life force energy, it's the energy around us, it's what helps us move and make us move and grow, and and then the earth, of course, is our physical substance, our body, and so if we look about it like that too, like our natural flow in life, we have that energy, and that's actually the life force energy that keeps us going and moving and expansive, so fire is within all of us, and it's part of who our ancestors were before and it's who we are now, but it's a great way that we can connect. And I see them saying that it doesn't mean that you have to go and have a big campfire or have like a, a fire ceremony if that's not possible. But at the same time, if we're wanting to let go or if we're wanting to receive new guidance or new information, we can sit in the darkness and stare at a candle if you want to activate new romance, or if you want to activate this new cultivation of your life force energy, adding candles or adding fire into that space can really help transmute the energy. 
Or if you're taking a bath and you're like, man, I just really want to feel this inspiration. Of course, it's like take time away from your cell phone, but also add that fire element into who you are, into sanctifying this beautiful journey, which we're on because we're all a part of it and we're all connected and our ancestors only want to help us heal and move forward in a way that is a worthy cause of us truly embracing and honoring this life. So that's very beautiful. Does anyone have any thoughts or any questions about any of that before we like move forward at all? Anything that sparked interest? No pun intended. (laughs) I don't know. I'm just going back to that lady as well, who, you know, was in the space of grieving and was like leaning on the fire for support, leaning on the fire for a re a reprogramming of who she was of letting go of letting go of the grief and allowing that warmth to fill her. And we have that ability to do the same. We can create sacred circle of fire, even if it's at home, just lighting a candle or going and just staring into the flames. Like, I don't know, there's just so much there that we can incorporate. It's just like us being willing to step into that space that will also help bring a deeper connection to our ancestors who use this fire as a way of communication a way of holding memory and a way of like deep interreflection. Thank you. And the other thing that's sticking out too, and I don't know why this is coming up, but even just a concept of like life force energy and sexual energy is one and the same, which we're all made from that life force energy. We have that life force energy around us, a part of us at all times. And I think that even what, what sparked what you're saying, Amiko, that was like, oh yeah, let's dive into this is that it just takes that one spark to like continue to keep growing and to continue to keep going. And so I don't know why, but I just keep seeing how fire can also implement and help rejuvenate that life force energy within us. That it's not bad or it's not wrong, but there are some times where, you know, if we're going through something really deep, it's hard to want to get out of bed or it's hard to feel so connected or to be a part of anything. Like I remember, you know, a little while ago, I had a falling out with a family member and it was really devastating and it was really hard for my, for my emotions. It was really hard for my heart. And I just remember like what kept me going is I would light a candle in my kitchen while I was unpacking or while I was doing things. And I would listen to of all things in Kanto, that Disney movie. And it was just like over and over and over. That's the only thing that brought me peace. And when I sat and I journaled and I prayed, like it was so hard to sit with that. It was like lighting that candle gave me permission to release what was going on or to just spark this sense of like, oh, what can I do to bring joy? And then I was like, I'm going to listen to this music and just be with it and to not make myself wrong for feeling so bad. And I don't have to step in to change all the actions of other people. Like all I can do is be here and be now. And I think that's really a lot of what our ancestors also experienced. You know, the things that we go through in our everyday life, yes, they may be different from those who came before us, but there's still similar threads of, of our heartache, of our desire of wanting to feel wanted of wanting to fit in, of wanting to have deep, intimate connection. Like those are things that our ancestors also experienced. And so we're not alone in that space. And even if it's lighting a candle to just say, hey, you know, I don't want to feel alone tonight, or I just need a little extra support. Just be here with me and allowing that warmth to cultivate inside of us. It's also so symbolic, like you said, Amiko, of like activating that fire within us to bring in that space of love, of compassion, of peace. I don't know. I think it's really powerful. Do you feel called to connect to your medicine within? Have you wanted to strengthen your spiritual gifts? Are you looking for ways to incorporate the sacred into your everyday life? Maybe do you want to have like-minded friends in a tribe who can connect with you? Modern Sage's Soul Tribe is dedicated to spiritual seekers like yourself who are embracing the medicine within. Now in this tribe, we are going to be doing moon gatherings, amazing spiritual gift giveaways, connecting to a soul tribe, as well as hosting mystery school classes. 
If you are feeling called to connect to the Soul Tribe, I will leave a link for you in the show notes. Thank you so much for listening to Modern Sages Podcast. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us online. Blessings. <laughs>